Get well from ME. 1. Introduction. The following is my personal opinion based on my experience and reading. It is not intended to replace medical advice for your condition from your doctor. For any diagnosis or treatment, you should always consult medical practitioners who are qualified, accredited, experienced with your condition and recommended. Hello, I'm Giles and welcome to the first in a few short video blogs about ME. That's myalgic encephalopathy or myalgic encephalomyelitis and chronic fatigue syndrome. Over the course of these vlogs, I'm hoping to talk about things like what ME is and what the symptoms are, and how it affects the lives of people who have it, how important rest and pacing are, and sleep and relaxation, how to use food, nutrition and vitamin supplements, and which supplements may help to boost your cell energy and your immune system, how our adrenal glands get exhausted, how alternative treatments like herbs, chiropractic and reflexology could help some people, and finding psychological support and coping with stress. But first, I'd like to tell you a bit about my experience with ME. Back at the end of my four happy years at university, I came down with a particularly nasty type of glandular fever called cytomegalovirus. It made me extremely ill for several weeks with loads of different symptoms. And basically, I never recovered. There were other complications too, and I was eventually diagnosed with ME. I've spent most of my 20s virtually housebound and at my worst, I couldn't walk 100 metres to the end of my road and back. I couldn't read for more than half an hour in a whole day, and I couldn't use a computer at all. And every day, I was having to make choices like, do I shave, or do I put the rubbish out, or do I talk to a friend on the phone for half an hour, or do I cook my lunch? Because I just couldn't do all of them. If you see someone with ME looking normal, or even well, at the shops or at the cinema, Bear in mind that might be literally the only thing they're able to do that whole week. I'm not exaggerating when I say that no one can really understand what it's like to have ME unless you've suffered with it yourself or have lived for at least a week under the same roof as someone who has. Thankfully, now I'm getting better. I'm working, I'm going out more, and I'm getting back to other activities too. I still haven't recovered completely, but a few years ago I couldn't even imagine ever being able to do what I'm doing now. Now, if you've got ME, I'm not going to pretend that I can do anything or say anything to make you get well. And it's certainly not your fault. You are not to blame for being ill or for not getting better. Sadly, there isn't one recognised cure or treatment for ME. Health services in this country often offer an approach of graded exercise, cognitive behavioural therapy and sometimes antidepressants. But this approach tends to make people with ME even worse. So if your doctor believes the outdated idea that ME is a psychological behaviour based on the fear that you're ill when you're not, then change doctors and find one who recognises that ME is a real illness, as all the scientific research has shown that it is. There aren't any promises that everyone with ME will get better or how quickly they might recover, or whether they'll get 100% well, or 90%, or even just 50%. ME can sometimes last a very long time, but thousands of people who've had ME are getting better every year, enjoying time with their friends and families, working again, returning to sports and hobbies, holidays and more, and feeling well. I haven't got any magic cure or secret insight, but hopefully trying to pull together the best acknowledged research, which is sadly on the sparse side, and the best accepted wisdom, and my experiences, and the experiences of people with ME who I know and who I've met or just read about, I really hope that through a combination of things which could help different people with ME, that we can look forward to getting well again, as well as genuinely understanding and supporting people with severe ME. I'll be back again soon to talk first more about what the symptoms of ME are and how it affects our lives.